As to Sony, I have a message for them as a company, and I have found that, you know, Twitter is a good way to get reach out to them directly as far as feedback, but so too is just coming out and saying things publicly as an open letter. My take on you as a company is that you are the Toyota of uh, electronics and that Toyota has a reputation for absolutely stellar, you know, reliability and, you know, cars that don't break down very frequently and when they do are easily repaired, you know, painlessly. And they have very great customer service reviews and everything and they're beloved in that regard. However, that stated, you have dropped the ball, ultimately, when it comes to your gaming division. As far as things are concerned, you have an institutional problem where if I were to identify your failure, you have learned far more from the experience of failure than you have from the success. You managed to absolutely clobber Nintendo in the late 90s you know, with the PlayStation and then the sequel to it, the PlayStation 2, but by the PlayStation 3, you had pretty much dropped the ball and, you know, had fallen for a lot of journalists who had written about, you know, the fact that we were... Saddam Hussein was, you know, basically gobbling up these parts and everything, and, you know, the the power of um, the system and... You also kind of got blindsided by first-person shooter gamers and their relentless obsession with having a system that operated just as fast as, um, just as quickly as, you know, the 60 frames per second, no matter how demanding the first-person shooter they actually bought was and everything and their relentless drive and quest to buy, you know, new PC parts. And you saw that. And you thought to yourself that what we need to be is the most powerful gaming system on the market. And if we have something that's able to engage in path tracing, the customers will come. And we are now looking at the results of that and must say and state that the PlayStation 5 sales have been disappointing, anemic. And, you know, unfortunately, the companies that have taken a risk on you, like Square Enix, have not ultimately made their money back because of it. And because of the narrow market that was concerned with this and everything. And, you know, Final Fantasy VII didn't end up saving the PlayStation 5 like I thought it might. So you have dropped the ball, fundamentally. You got caught up in observations of the PC gaming market and thought that they translated well to the market for video game consoles and unfortunately the lessons are very different for the console market than they are for the pc market because one thing the pc market has going for it is vendor neutrality in that you know pcs will pretty much always be relevant because of the fact that everybody wants to make games for the platform of the pc like you know we're always going to get games that are not available on other platforms too and in much more uncensored forms you know, PC gamers get access to a lot more than console gamers do. And there is an equal opportunity of hardware, you know, that you can get, you know, from and everything. And, every, you know, Microsoft doesn't tend to make, I guess, on Windows exclusives. You, you know, it, it's it's tried very hard, I guess, to get DirectX to be the platform that people adopt. But, you know, Vulcan is slowly but surely taking over for platform neutrality and everything and and this is just you know the pc market is a very different landscape than the console market because you can expect to only be able to play games you know on one company's system you know in in the in this space and you know the thing you know and all the other third parties are going to have to come along for the ride in the console space whereas you know here here in the you know i mean i guess it's kind of the same and that everybody makes for windows here in the windows world but it's not you know on the in the pc world we have greater control over our machines than we do in the console world so what ends up happening in a lot of ways is that people find ways to tunnel around you know the the limitations that confine you to one platform i guess because there's a greater degree of control over things and 
these differences start to translate in such a way where, you know, there's going to be a large diversity of games that end up on Windows, you know, and, and available for it just because of how widespread, you know, PC ownership is. And for the fact that, I guess... Well, I mean, another aspect of it is that people are constantly upgrading their machines to, you know, stay current with the current generation of games. And, you know, there's a history, though, that has built up over time and institutionally in the PC world where people want backwards compatibility with yesterday's games, but still they want to be able to play the modern ones and everything. And that just doesn't translate as well to the world of console games and everything. And, you know, back during the PlayStation days, you know, of, of one and two, you managed to beat Nintendo because you gave developers what they wanted, you know, and the gold star developers, the really good ones that sold and games that, you know, were the killer apps basically came over to your side of the equation, you know, square Enix being a big one and a pain point for a lot of us that are fans of that particular company. Like I can count myself among them you need to do everything you can to retain them as far as a client, you know, because if you don't have them, if they bolt, you're going to be in real trouble. People like me will basically buy systems just to play Square Enix's games, you know? Um, so the thing that I wanted to say in all of this is that you've dropped the ball. You have forgotten what you learned in the past you know, you defeated Nintendo once, you can do it again. You just need to start, you know, pulling your, you need to start to realize that gamers can be very noisy about 60 frames per second, and then they can be very noisy about high-end graphics and everything else. But these people, despite their noisiness, at the end of the day, if you put something in front of them that's fun to play, and it doesn't have the best graphics in the world, they're going to fall in line ultimately. And basically the real reason that the PlayStation defeated the Nintendo is that it had the better games library. So make great games and the market will reward you for it. On the cell phone side of the equation, I have nothing but eternal gratitude to you for finally not doing what the other companies in the space are doing. And their greed is insatiable. They have gotten to the point in which it's it's just insane and and you know the thing is that everybody's calling you out and saying that the xperia is the most expensive phone on the damn market and it is it's a very spendy phone and everything but you didn't demand the tribute money be paid to you you know you just wanted to sell us one phone and have that be the final you know hurrah to you as a company that we had to give you the appeal of one transaction and then to be done with it and be able to put whatever SD cards we want in your system instead of having to continually subscribe to this model of, you know, upgrade the painfully and expensive internal storage that will force you to pay a premium to the company that you've decided to pick in this space. No, you let us upgrade on the cheap. We, we You didn't demand that we pay the tribute to you you know, the tribute money to you in turn in the form of, you know, paying for expensive internal storage from you. You liberated us from that. And for that, I don't think I will soon forget, you know. So, you know, when, when it finally comes time to upgrade, I will probably be pre-ordering my import to the United States of the Xperia you know, so that you get some of the money from it instead of just getting a refurbished. The reason why I went for a refurbished is that my patience has run dry. I want one now. Anyways, you know, uh, if you did see this and you did listen to me, thank you for your time. 